Hi guys! This week I'm going to be painting a new fantasy figure for you, which is really exciting because I really enjoy painting fantasy figures. The model that I have I picked up last weekend at Crisis. Um, it is a Stag Shaman by Imaginative Miniatures. I should probably say something about that really quick. Imaginative Miniatures is a really small company located here in the Netherlands. Uh, it hasn't been around very long, and they only really have one range at this point, which consists of other sort of anthropomorphic figures like this stag. They have things like bears, uh, wolves, uh, other deer, uh, pigs, and a uh, boar. Um, and they're not really designed for any specific rule set or game. They're just there for whatever kind of fantasy applications you'd like to assign them to. Uh, an example of where they might be handy is, say, like Frostgrave. I understand their latest expansion includes rules for some sort of stag-type warrior. So, you know, I can see them fitting into a lot of game systems with a little bit of creativity. Um, this is also going to be a good tutorial for focusing on uh, some advanced uh, animal painting, which will hopefully be just as useful here as on the more realistic, uh, four-footed, non-scythe-wielding varieties. <laughs> First of all, here are all the paints that you're going to need to complete this figure. First, I'm going to start out by base coating the figure, and I'm applying a mixture here of German camouflage black brown and saddle brown because I decided that I want the stag to have a very sort of red brown toned flesh. Next, I'm going to apply a really heavy Agrax Earth Shade wash to the entire figure. Now I'm going to apply a first highlight and this is going to be the saddle brown again with just a little bit of the German camouflage black brown to darken it down. Not as much as I used in the base coat. And you can see I'm just going to start kind of picking out all of the muscles and sort of really defining them and kind of leaving that darker brown down in the sort of creases between all of his musculature here. I'm going to continue that process now with a layer of just pure saddle brown, just continuing to emphasize his muscles and leaving darker brown sort of in between. I'm not going to worry too much about highlighting his face. I mean, I'm going to apply the paint, but I'm not going to worry about doing a very neat job because eventually I'm going to be doing something else there. That goes ditto for the sort of furry areas on his neck and around his hooves. I'm going to be applying the colors there and sort of trying to get lighter colors where I want it to look like there's light hitting, but at the same time, I'm not really going to worry about dealing with all the individual strands of hair or anything like that at this point. For my third highlight layer, I've now mixed some Vallejo cork brown into the saddle brown, and I'm just going to continue applying it over top. Uh, this time I've got the paint a little bit thinner, and I'm blending it out a little bit more. When you've got big bulgy muscles like this, you want to tend to apply the sort of lighter colors right near the edge where it um, contacts with those darker dividing lines, and then sort of blend it out from there because that'll give a really nice kind of pleasing effect. Mm -hmm. 
The fourth highlight here is cork brown, just by itself with nothing added. And I've got it thinned down and I'm trying to apply it pretty transparently here because it's a pretty light color and I don't really wanna overdo things. It's important when you're painting these sort of very heavily muscled figures that you're very clean and precise with your brushwork. You need to make sure that sort of all those sort of divisions in the muscles and, and you know the body are really clean, really smooth, that you paint nice, you know, even line. So you may need to pay some sort of extra attention there to make sure that you do a good job. At this point, I'm going to start applying a really heavy wash to the furry areas of the stag. First, I'm using Agrax Earthshade, and you can see I'm really, really building it up. And I'm going to even apply a couple of layers to get a really strong wash. And in fact, what you probably want to do is apply several extra layers in areas that are really going to fall into the shadow. The advantage is that we kind of pre-shaded and pre-highlighted the figure a little bit so that you know, that's gonna show through the wash quite a bit. So you're still gonna get areas that look brighter and areas that look darker, but at the same time, this will really help to define all the sort of individual hair strands and sort of the shagginess. And then to define the furry areas even further, I'm now using Nuln Oil. I'm not applying it as heavily as I did the Agrax Earth Shade, and I'm focusing it again on areas where I want there to be more deep shadow. But I think it's also important to get this on here because this way the furry hair areas will have a really distinctly sort of different tone to the rest of the body, and I think that gives a more attractive effect. Now, sometimes this issue you may run into when you're painting these really bulgy muscled figures is that you end up with too stark a contrast between sort of the highlighted upper surfaces of the muscles and sort of the creases in between them. Uh, that happens to me quite often. But uh, there's ways that you can kind of deal with that and tone it down. So I'm going to be using a trick that is often applied to sort of larger scale 54 millimeter figures and that is to kind of find a color that's in between the two different shades you want to kind of blend together. So this lighter color and then the darker color and then take it and thin it down and then so it's real transparent so there's a lot of water in there and then sort of apply it sort of very lightly over the two areas and that'll sort of help unify them and that's what I'm doing here I'm doing it really cheap and dirty just with one color normally you would use a lot more but yeah, you can see I'm just running it down in those deep creases and that will help make those areas a little less dark but because the paint's so thin and transparent it's not really going to have a massive effect it just brings everything together at this point I decided I wanted really one final, final highlight on the musculature of the stag. So I took my cork brown here and I just lightened it with a little bit of white paint, not very much. And I'm going to apply this very sparingly just to some areas where I want a little bit of extra light hitting really to emphasize them. Because when you've got such a heroically proportioned figure, you really want to emphasize that, especially since this is otherwise a pretty simple model. So it's an important thing to focus on. So I'm just, you know adding a little of that in here and there, uh, applying small amounts and really blending it out extensively. And you can see just a, a tiny bit is really all you need. I'm next going to dedicate more time to the stag's head. Obviously, I was painting before, but I wasn't really worrying too much about how well I did. Uh, if you look at pictures of stags, a lot of times the hair on their sort of face and head is a much lighter, almost gray, white, silver color as opposed to sort of the rest of their coat. So I'm going to be trying to simulate that here. So I'm now base coating that entire area with the cork brown, but I've lightened it considerably with uh, Vallejo Silver Gray. And I'm just going to be sort of applying it to all those areas. And you can see I'm working it down to into sort of the, a little bit into the fur around his neck and kind of, you know, sort of trying to make little individual strokes and kind of 
create a little bit of a gradient effect so that it sort of gradually blends out down into the darker brown below. And now I'm just going to continue that process by adding even more silver gray in and just continuing to build up highlights on the face and head. And now I'm really definitely being careful how I paint this area and being sure that I'm precise and do a neat job. Around this point, I also started working some white into the mixture because I found that the silver gray was not going to get bright enough or really light enough. And it, it, in these stags, they really do get quite light colored coats up here. So that's okay. So uh, I'm just going over it now with this much lighter paint. And I'm going to continue to, though, to blend these lighter colors down into the fur of the neck, but I'm just not going to go quite so far down each layer. This was the final kind of highlight, which was really almost pure white with just a hint of the cork brown in it. So it's just kind of a really kind of pale white tan color. And I'm using that to really emphasize his eyebrows around his mouth and muzzle and the tips of his ears and all those areas that are really important where you want a lot of extra definition. Next, I'm going to be sort of doing the details and finishing touches on his face. So I'm going to start out here by painting his eyes and also his nose. I'm base coating both of those just using Vallejo German Gray. You have to be a little bit neat painting the nose, but it's otherwise not a big deal. And then I applied to the nose a real quick highlight just by mixing a little tiny bit of the silver gray in to lighten it up and applying just a couple of layers on there to give it a kind of a lighter, shinier effect. And then you can even finish up with just a tiny like dot of pure silver gray to make it look wet and shiny. As for the eyes, I didn't really do anything else except I did take just some pure white and just add a tiny kind of white dot of sort of reflection in each of the eyes, which really helps bring the whole thing to life. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more work on the mouth. I noticed from looking at actual stags that they often have really sort of a lot of pink flesh around their lips and the end of their muzzle and also even around sort of the insides of their ear. So in order to simulate that, I've taken a little bit of Citadel um, Evil Sun Scarlet, just a hint really, and mix it into that sort of white light color I was using for the flesh. And I'm gonna be applying that very gently sort of around the lips and muzzle area and a little bit inside the ears. And you can go a little bit darker, or a little bit lighter, depending on what you find works. I've also base coated the inside of the mouth there with Vallejo Black Red, because that's a good base coat. And then I'm just gonna kind of spend some time cleaning up and detailing it to make sure that the lips look nice and smooth and even. Uh, in order to define inside the mouth a little bit better, I took some cork brown, and again, I mixed in the Mephiston Red to get just a slightly deeper shade of pink. And I'm gonna use that to sort of pick out his tongue and just, you know, highlight it slightly. And you can, again, use that lighter shade of pink, the white kind of pink color, that is, if you want to highlight that, that tongue a little bit more as well. And you can just kind of do this until you're happy with the results. And you've got sort of a nice sort of more flush color in that area. I'm now going to base coat the stag's hooves and horns using a Vallejo German Gray. I'm then going to add a couple really subtle highlight layers just by mixing a little bit of silver gray into the German Gray. Nothing too strong make sure you go in kind of very gradual steps here and you can see on the horns I'm just kind of focusing on the tops and the tips and on those um, hooves I'm really sort of starting at the front edge and sort of feathering it or sort of blending it out to the sides. Uh, I wouldn't recommend applying maybe more than two highlights here, maybe three. That's all, really all you need and just and definitely you don't want to go too light here. Kind of keep this nice subtle look. I also noticed that stags often 
will have sort of light, almost white, gray tips to their horns where they've got new growth. So I'm taking a very light mixture of the German gray and silver gray hair as a base and I'm applying it to the tips and then I'm gonna just take uh, some pure silver gray and start applying that to the tips and blending it downwards. You actually don't even really have to blend very much, it just kind of works itself out because it's so um, such a small area and the paint being light is pretty transparent so you can just apply kind of a couple of layers in succession and kind of make it increasingly strong towards the tips of the horns. Uh, I, I then just finished that off really quick as well by taking a little bit of white paint and just daubing it at the really extreme top tips of those horns. Now, because I really hadn't painted enough brown yet on this figure, I'm going to be moving on to the leather belt and sort of bag strap. I'm base coating those areas here with German camouflage black brown. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some Vallejo chocolate brown and apply sort of a general overall highlight. And while I'm working on that, I'm also gonna kinda of quickly base coat the handle of his sickle there. In order to continue highlighting the leather, I'm then gonna take and mix just a little bit of cork brown into the chocolate brown and kind of apply that lightly along the edges, kind of blending it inwards, trying to make the inner area dark. Then to finish off, I'm just gonna take pure cork brown, but I'm gonna thin it down so it's probably a bit waterier than normal. And I'm just gonna apply that really lightly as an edge highlight along the edges to give that sort of worn, faded look that you get with leather. And the nice thing is if you keep your paint real thin, then you can apply a couple layers and just kind of build it up and get some more worn looking areas and then some other less worn areas. But the whole process is gonna be subtle and you won't kind of overcommit that way and apply too much paint. I really desperately wanted the stag's loincloth to be some other color than brown because I was getting thoroughly sick of it and I really wanted to get some contrast in this figure, but I wanted to complement everything else. So I decided to opt for sort of a white shade, but a more, a more pure white than the what I used on his head. So I'm just base coating the whole area here with a Vallejo silver gray. And you'll probably need to go back and put on a couple uh, layers of this just because you're working over a black base coat. And to help define that fur pelt a little bit more, I made a very watered down wash of Nuln oil and just sort of applied that lightly over the uh, loincloth. Now I really felt strongly that I had to get some kind of color into this figure somehow because it's otherwise so neutral, all these browns and grays and stuff. So I decided that a good place to do that would be on his pouch. At the same time though, I think it, I felt that it needed to be a pretty kind of natural looking color, nothing too bright or artificial. So I thought green would be a good choice. So I'm base coating this satchel using a mixture of German gray and uh, Vallejo Deep Green. Once that's on there, I then went over and I applied sort of a first highlight that was just pure deep green, which is nice because it's a really rich uh, jewel-like tone and it really pops out, which I think is incredibly necessary on this figure to have some color that draws the eye. I then just applied a final top highlight to the bag by just lightening the deep green uh, slightly with a little bit of white. It doesn't take much. And a matter of fact, you wanna not go overboard because you'll get a pastel, but just add a little white in there. And then you can kind of layer that on sort of the top wrinkles and creases and get a nice sort of extra light tone where you need it. I then finished up the loincloth by taking some pure white and just over brushing it lightly over the cloth so that it didn't really get too much down in the area that I washed, but you've got a nice bright white surface. And you can kind of build that up a little bit to, you know, put a couple layers of over brushing on so that it gets extra bright in some kind of key areas like along the edges or, you know, kind of on his rump or that kind of thing. I actually got a teeny tiny bit of green tone into that white by accident, but I think in the end it's actually not a bad thing. It, it's kind of, help, it's subtle, really subtle, you don't see it. And it kind of 
helps pull everything together a little bit. Um, I also want to mention, because I don't think I talked about it before, that I also kind of finished the wood handle of his sickle just by mixing a little bit of Vallejo khaki into the chocolate brown, kind of layering that on, and then applying a final high highlight of pure khaki. But I, it's, it's not a really, I didn't show it, but it's not a really big deal because it's just a small area and you should be able to paint it really quickly. Now I'm going to paint the belt buckle and I'm going to base coat it here with a mixture of German camouflage black brown and Vallejo air gold. I'm also going to paint sort of the bezel around the bottom of the sickle just because I want to get some extra color and detail in there. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and highlight both areas real quickly just using pure uh, Vallejo air gold. It should only take a second to do both of these pieces. Now for the sickle blade itself. I base coated the whole um, sickle using um, Vallejo Air gunmetal, and then once that had dried, I kind of applied a nice light even, and that's the most important thing. You, know, you get an even wash of Nuln oil onto the entire surface. That just helps kind of darken it down and unify everything. Once that was dry, I then just went back in again with the gunmetal and sort of subtly highlighted over it again just to develop some kind of tones in there. And then the final step was to take some Vallejo Air Steel and I used that to highlight along the sort of the cutting edge of the sickle blade and a little bit around on the very top surface of the blade where it was catching a little light. And then you can kind of keep fooling with it if you want with some more uh, wash or some more gun metal until you get a result that looks even and smooth and nice. You can also take a little of the steel if you want and put a tiny extra highlight on the top of his belt buckle for some extra shine, but it's totally up to you whether you like that look or not. Okay, so here is our uh, finished stag shaman figure. He um, came out pretty well in the end. I have to admit, I did struggle a little bit to get the skin tones just the way I wanted and to make sure that the muscles look good because as I said getting the contrast kind of the balance between the shadows and the highlights on the muscles just right and not too extreme can be a little bit tricky and of course that whole situation with transition between the brown and the sort of the gray on his head is also fairly difficult so while this figure looks fairly simple there are some fairly um, tricky techniques that you probably have to get a handle on to really make it look very good and the rest of it though is really quite simple so it's you know it's all about this skin and fur and that kind of thing uh, afterwards I thought you know there might be other ways you could make this figure even more interesting like I thought about it though I didn't do it maybe applying some tattoos to him would be kind of neat some tribal looking things or you know because he's a shaman and he's maybe even doing some magic it might be fun to kind of add sort of a glow effect to the sickle and you could get real fancy even and have some like source lighting so it like reflects on his face and stuff and you know so i consider all those things but and and i didn't really want to let that figure get that complicated at this point and i wanted to also keep it you know something i could do in a reasonable amount of time that i thought you know you guys wouldn't feel too overwhelmed by so again i hope you like this video if you did please uh, like it uh, share it with your friends leave me comments if you uh you know want to and of course subscribe to my channel if you have not gotten a chance to do so already so that is all for now and i will see you next time